My name is Chrissy. I'm currently 31 years old and work remotely from my parents' house. I'm single, and my family consists of my parents and my brother, who married last year. For a long time, I believed my brother and his new wife, Jana, were blissfully happy. However, recently, Jana has been visiting our house frequently. This house is her in-laws, and I initially thought she might be nervous about interacting during her first visit. But she seemed very relaxed and showed no signs of anxiety. On the other hand, I'm always captivated by Jana's beauty and confident demeanor, which makes me feel nervous. Jana treats me like her own sister, speaking openly and directly without hesitation. One day, she asked me, Chrissy, I heard you don't have a boyfriend. Why don't you have a partner? Are you uncomfortable around men? I responded, it's not like that, but I'm busy with work and don't have many opportunities to meet people because I work remotely. My chances to meet men are very limited, and I don't have time to participate in mixers or use matchmaking services. After hearing my reply, Jana nodded thoughtfully and said, the lack of opportunities is a big problem. If an appropriate person appears, I would like to offer advice on makeup and fashion to enhance your charm. Jana cares for me as if she were my real sister, showing a willingness to support and encourage changes in my life. I am always deeply grateful for her warm consideration and supportive words. First, it's important to break away from your current playing style and practice going out, improving your makeup and fashion sense. When you have a chance to meet an attractive man, Chrissy, you first need to possess the basic elements that make people like you, Jana suggested. Ah. Uh. I sighed deeply. Her mention of the uh, basics of being liked specifically refers to the style of my appearance during remote work. I often use a bandana to keep my bangs in place for better concentration, and since I spend a lot of time at home, I rarely wear makeup. I just focus on moisturizing, as there is little need for me to go out. I usually wear comfortable loungewear at home. It's unimaginable for me to go out in this style. Therefore, since Jana only sees me at home, there might be a misunderstanding about how I appear when I go out. In reality, at my brother's wedding and other official family gatherings, I have always made sure to wear appropriate makeup and clothing. However, it seems that Jana has completely forgotten about these efforts of mine. Let's start by checking out your closet, Christy, Jana exclaimed. She then entered my room without hesitation and began thoroughly inspecting my closet. I hesitated for a moment about stopping her, but feeling that her actions were all well-intentioned, I ultimately decided to just observe. I don't own many clothes, but I am selective about my purchases, ensuring they fit my style. My favorite brand of clothing is neatly stored in my closet, which surprised Jana when she saw how organized it was. Wow, I didn't expect you to have such nice clothes. Oh, and your makeup items are top-notch too. I thought these clothes from this brand were too expensive for me, she spoke, picking up each piece of clothing and opening my makeup case, exploring my room as per her interest. After about an hour, feeling that she might be overdoing it, I decided to speak up. Jan, it's about time, I said. She snapped back to reality at my words and said, oh, I got carried away looking through your clothes and makeup. I've checked everything, and it seems there's no need to buy anything new. I even took out all the winter clothes, and they are fine. Maybe you just bought the recommended makeup items without understanding them. Seeing the winter clothes scattered about, which should have been neatly stored, I sighed internally. I was a bit disappointed that Jan had no intention of tidying up, but I did not mention it. No, I choose my makeup products myself. My skin is sensitive, so I have tried various items over and over and have narrowed it down to the current items, I quietly explained. Really? But with such high-quality makeup at your disposal, it seems you don't often go out and hence don't use makeup much, do you? Jana pointed out. Yes, honestly, I hardly ever put on makeup unless there's a special occasion. I only apply it when it's truly necessary, I replied. Janice seemed unsatisfied and declared strongly, that won't do. Okay, next time I see you, I'll teach you some makeup techniques. As Jana went through my closet, dusk fell, and she finally decided to head home. I couldn't quite understand why she visited our house so often. Perhaps things weren't going well with my brother. 
Considering this possibility, it puzzled me deeply why she would come to our house if her relationship with my brother was indeed deteriorating. I tried to grasp Jana's intentions, but I couldn't find an answer. Tilting my head in confusion, I watched as my parents warmly welcomed her frequent visits and treated her like a member of the family. This was in stark contrast to my own reaction. I couldn't hide my bewilderment. Isn't it nice for Chrissy to have a big sister? We're looking forward to Jana giving you makeup lessons next time. But it's not good for Chrissy to rely too much on Jana, my parents said, and I nodded in agreement. But I harbored mixed feelings inside. In truth, I have never actively sought makeup advice from Jana. My life is incredibly busy right now, and I don't have the luxury to prioritize romance, handling all my makeup needs by myself. Jana's offer to teach me makeup techniques was not at my request, but sprang from her own sudden idea. From past experiences, I often find myself swept up in Jana's unpredictable ideas, and while my parents interpret this as her being kind to me, I honestly wish she would refrain from repeatedly intruding into my private space. As I want to focus on my work from home, yet I can't outright reject her because her actions are well-intentioned, it's difficult to raise this issue with my parents, who are welcoming towards her. With these heavy thoughts, I returned to my room as I neatly folded and put away the winter clothes that Jana had scattered. A realization struck me. Wait, where is my favorite sweater? I muttered to myself. A particularly cherished sweater was missing. I had no memory of discarding that sweater. Whenever I bought new clothes, I responsibly disposed of the ones I no longer needed, so I always had a perfect understanding of what was in my closet. As far as I remember, I had never parted with that favorite piece of winter clothing. In fact, it was purchased just last year and still looked nearly new. Therefore, I had stored my clothes properly in the closet. The last time that closet was opened was actually today, when Jana was rummaging through my room. During that time, I went to the living room to ask my parents to prepare some warm tea and snacks for Jana, leaving her alone for a while. Since I saw her bringing her bag into my room, if she had hidden something in it, there would be a reasonable explanation for her actions. However, suddenly accusing her of stealing my clothes might not be believed by others. I myself don't have solid evidence that she actually took the clothes, so there's nothing I can do. While I was almost resigned to helplessly accept the situation, I decided to take precautions to avoid the same scenario in the future. Anticipating her next visit, I purchased a security item. A month later, as expected, Jana visited my home and cheerfully declared, Today, I'm holding a makeup class. She went straight to my room, began looking through my closet, and picked up a bag containing my cherished makeup tools. Next, she sat me down on the carpet in the room and began the makeup class, using various cosmetics she brought. Since I had no plans to go out today, after the makeup was done, I headed to the washroom to remove it. During that time, Jana told me, I'm done here, so I'm going to leave, and started preparing to leave the room. I called out to her, I've prepared some tea and snacks in the living room. Please eat some before you go, and confirmed that she actually left before heading to my computer. This was because I had previously installed a hidden camera in my room to prevent the same kind of situation from happening again. I turned on my computer and began checking the footage from when I was away. The video showed Jana taking makeup items from the closet and discreetly placing several items into her bag. It seemed she thought that even if she stole some nail polishes I rarely use, I wouldn't notice immediately. Watching this, I sighed in dismay and disbelief. I transferred the captured footage to my smartphone for further evidence and storage, then headed to the living room to explain what had happened to the rest of my family. Coincidentally, my brother was in the living room when I arrived, and he approached me as soon as he saw me. Our parents were out that day and not at home. Ah. Uh. Chrissy, it's been a while. I heard you got a makeup lesson from Jana today. Please stop relying on her. You're the reason she feels compelled to come here, my brother said. I was surprised and responded, what? I don't recall ever asking Jana for help, and I know her visits aren't at my request. Unable to hide my confusion, I had just discovered that makeup items were stolen, and my anger towards Jana was right there, yet my irritation only grew as my brother spoke as if I had been begging Jana to come. Bro, I never asked Jana to come here. The makeup lesson was her own idea, I countered. 
He snapped back, what are you talking about? Jana has been trying hard to help you get yourself together because you're a mess. Me, a mess? I was increasingly confused and just stood there. Then, my brother snorted coldly, I heard from our parents all you do is play on your computer at home every day. Jana is worried about you. She told me your closet is full of expensive clothes, and you have plenty of good makeup. Despite being a neat, where do you get so much money? You must be siphoning off our parents. We can't leave this to you anymore. That's why we're taking over the household. This was shocking news to me. My brother seemed to conclude that I was a neat based solely on the fact that I use a computer at home. However, that's not the truth at all. I earn a solid income through my work from home, and my lack of social outings doesn't mean I'm not actively participating in society. I believed that my parents supported me and understood my situation. I was confident that they would never tell me to leave the house. So, when my parents just came home, I decided to act immediately. I relayed my brother's harsh words to them and asked for their help in calming him down. However, my parents didn't immediately try to convince my brother and seemed deeply troubled. They hummed and hawed, apparently pondering something in a state of urgency. I pressed our parents for clarity. Scott says he's going to live here, but are you really okay with that, dad and mom? I asked. Dad quietly responded, well, if Scott wants to live here, I see no reason to object. Mom seemed to agree, saying, indeed, Jana is a wonderful person, and it might be fun for all of us to live together in this house. Hearing these words, I was completely at a loss for words. At that moment, Scott, standing behind me, wore a triumphant expression and raised his voice. Unlike you, a neat who just stays at home, I actually earn money and have a wife. Nobody needs someone like you, he said. I immediately retorted, I am not a neat. I work from home. However, Scott continued dismissively, oh, work from home. That's what pathetic people who have dropped out of society do. It's not much different from being a neat. His words further disheartened me, and I was pained by the deepening rift within our family. His understanding of work from home is mistaken. Many companies nowadays endorse remote work, and plenty of people are fully employed and earning from it. While I am not directly employed by a company, that does not diminish my value. Still, being looked down upon as a neat by my brother is unpleasant. All right, the neat who works from home, pack your stuff and leave, he said. In this situation, both dad and mom looked at me and Scott alternately, saying things like, what to do, and, we shouldn't interfere anymore, showing their reluctance. It's truly a disheartening situation. Perhaps everyone is charmed by Jana's good nature. Maybe Jana and Scott have talked about how fun it would be to spend more time together. If they have children in the future, compared to me who doesn't have a partner, the married Scott is more likely to provide our parents with grandchildren. If it comes down to choosing between grandchildren and me, our parents would choose grandchildren. I can't be sure of our parents' true feelings, but it was clear that there was no place for me in this house. Yet, I shed no tears in the current situation. It's clear that I am at an advantage. I understand. I'll take the furniture and appliances with me, I said, and Scott looked surprised. Jana reacted the same as Scott. How did a neat like you afford furniture and appliances? Scott asked. Check with dad and mom. The furniture and appliances we got after you moved out were all paid for by me, I responded. After that, I left the room to pack my things and contact some acquaintances. Once I had left, Scott immediately asked our parents, can you believe that such a neat managed to get all that furniture and appliances? It seemed our parents hadn't grasped the entire situation yet, and with a smile, they said, if Chrissy is called a neat, then since you are earning more, Scott, we can buy new furniture and appliances if hers are gone, right? They also mentioned, I do want a new massage chair, but Chris called it a waste and opposed buying it. My parents have always been optimistic, and I think they are not worried because Scott, who works at a company, earns well enough. Even after I leave this house, in fact, dad tends to spend more than I earn, and I have been paying the property taxes on this house for a long time. They probably hadn't told Scott that fact. Our parents are the type not to share their disadvantages with others. 
Even as Scott repeatedly brought up money issues, our parents only responded with a laugh. We're at ease because you are here, Scott. I watched this exchange from the stairs while simultaneously making calls for my moving preparations. The next day, I was set to move my furniture and belongings to an apartment I had previously chosen. I had asked several acquaintances to help with the move, and everything was planned to proceed smoothly. Scott and Jana were deep in conversation with our parents late into the night, but it seemed they were having difficulty connecting. Meanwhile, I took a brief nap and packed my belongings into boxes. The next day, with the help of my friends, packing was completed, and the movers arrived. Fortunately, a friend of mine owns the moving company, and since it was a slow period for moves, it was very helpful. As furniture and appliances were being moved out of the house, Scott and Jana looked stunned. I asked the movers to do a final check of the house, and after confirmation, the truck departed for my new home. Chrissy, shall we head to your new place? I'm sorry for suddenly asking you to help with the move. Don't mention it. When you said you wanted to set up a new writing environment, I promised to help. It's no trouble at all. Writing up until then, Jana, who had been silent in surprise, suddenly spoke to me. Yes, I am actually a novelist. This man here is my editor. I've been planning to move out of my parents' house for a long time to create a better environment for writing. Someone would enter my room without permission and take my clothes and makeup. I wanted to move out sooner, but I couldn't because I was paying the property taxes on this house. That's when Scott and you came and started saying you would live here. I'm so grateful you are here to take care of our parents, who love gambling. I don't plan to tell you all where my new place is. I can't stand the thought of a thief leaving, sister-in-law, coming over. Oh, and since this house is in my name, I plan to sell it. As I spoke, I pulled out my smartphone and played a video of Jana stealing my cosmetics and putting them in her bag. Seeing this, Jana's face turned pale. My brother and parents, who were not yet aware of her stealing, then looked at her with cold eyes. Jana, it's not what it looks like, Scott said. Chrissy was a neat, and it seemed so wrong that a neat would have expensive cosmetics and clothes. I thought I was doing her a favor by taking them. Regardless of her excuses, the fact remains she stole my things, and she is a thief. I shrugged and said, well, this is a good moment to cut ties with everyone. After that, I got into the car driven by my editor. Just before leaving the family home, Scott and Jana were arguing with our parents. If they started fighting in front of the house, the neighbors would surely intervene. I blocked all their numbers on my smartphone to ensure I wouldn't be involved anymore. Months later, during a book signing event, a gaunt Jana showed up with the clothes and nail polish she had stolen from me. I'm sorry. I need help, she said. But I responded, I'm sorry, but I don't know someone like you. Without taking back the clothes or nail polish, I left the scene. According to acquaintances, after the house was sold, my parents, brother, and Jana started living together. However, my parents continued their wasteful spending, just as they did when I was around. As a result, it seems Scott has stopped providing financial support since his income alone wasn't enough to sustain them. I heard that my parents suddenly became aggressive and started taking it out on Jana and Scott. Jana also started working to support their living, and she is so busy that she hardly has any time to rest, making the idea of having children unthinkable. Since I am no longer involved, I occasionally hear about their situation while I focus on my writing quietly at my new home.